Hey everyone, welcome to the Bruce Williams channel. Today we're going to be reviewing this Tudor Heritage Chrono in Blue. This is a watch that I've not really paid much attention to over the years, like most of you. You know, when we're looking at Tudor, a lot of us either look at the Black Bay or we look at the Pelagos, and that's it. I guess right now, uh, maybe some people are looking into the Royal, it's new, it's different, but the Heritage Chrono is always kind of in the background. And I want to bring some more attention to it because it is a really fun watch. It's bold. And I tried to do an intro to this video that kind of illustrated how this makes me feel. This watch, this watch is bold. It's a rock star. It's colorful. It's loud. It's fun. It incites a little bit of emotion in me. And maybe I'm taking that a bit too far. But when you hold it in hand, when you put it on wrist, you go, yeah, this watch is cool. This is different. I dig the vintage reissue of a very awesome uh, reference from the 1970s. So this Tudor Heritage Chrono in Blue, this is based off of the Oyster Date Chronograph from 1971, the Monte Carlo, the 71690. Those original references, depending on condition, depending on service history, depending on uh, completeness, they can sell anywhere from twenty to thirty thousand dollars. So it's a it's become quite a collectible. And I think for good reason, it's a really interesting watch. And I like the fact that if you're not into vintage watches, you're not into spending, you know, tens of thousands of dollars on pieces, nothing against those that do. But I think most of us in this hobby, we're, we're not that type of a collector. And it's nice to have an option from the brand, from Tudor, not an homage, not a cheap Chinese knockoff, nothing like that. It's nice to have an option from from the from the manufacturer that's contemporary and attainable. So this watch retails on the bracelet for four thousand five hundred and twenty five dollars. If you opt for it on the fabric strap like I have in front of the camera, the price is four thousand two hundred dollars. So really, there's only a three hundred and twenty five dollar difference between the two. And I would say, guys, the best value is actually getting it on the bracelet and then adding the fabric strap separately at another point. Uh, but if you want to save a little bit of money, you can opt for the fabric strap. So let's talk about the dimensions. Let's talk about the differences and the details. I'll talk about the good. I'll talk about the not so good of this watch. And hopefully at the end of the video, you have a very, uh, just a very solid sense of what this watch is all about and how it might fit in your own collection, in your own watch rotation, and on your wrist. So this watch is 41.8 millimeters of diameter, 50.3 in overall lug-to-lug -lug length, 22 millimeter lugs, and a 13 millimeter height, which is actually pretty impressive for an automatic chronograph with 150 meters of water resistance. That's a little bit thinner than what you would find from other brands. Like, let me compare this to my Speedmaster, my Moon Watch. This is the Sapphire Sandwich. Very comparable, but even though the Tudor is actually thinner, it doesn't look thinner and it doesn't wear thinner. So it is pretty thin, but it definitely has some substance on wrist. And for reference, my wrists are 7.25 inches in circumference. This is the T401 movement, which is not an in-house movement. This is an ETA 2892 with a Dubois de Praz chronograph module attached to the movement, to the ETA 2892. So we have 42 hours of power reserve. And you will notice here with the chronograph, with the elapsed minutes, there is no tick to the next position. This is a very gradual minute progression. And some people might not like that. You might love that. You know, it's just something of note that I wanted to bring your attention to. Now, another thing with this, with this module, with this movement, sometimes with some manufacturers, you get offset chronograph pushers because of the nature of the module. But you don't have that here with this. Uh, you can see the function pushers, the crown is all on one plane of elevation. And I like that. I think that's good. We have a sapphire crystal and notice we do not have a cyclops like you would find on the original from the 1970s. I think most of you, I think most of you will like the fact that this does not have the cyclops Personally, I'm not a Cyclops hater at all. In fact, I think it's uh, I think it's really functional. Enlarging the date, I think uh, I think it's just easier to read. But this will not have the Cyclops. But we do have the blue shield signature 
in the crown. And that's fun. That's cool. That's different from the original that carried a Rolex crown. The original also had coin edging as opposed to the knurling that's found on the bezel, it's found on the function pushers, and it's found on the screw down crown. I like the knurling. I think it's actually pretty interesting. It has good levels of grip. And I'm going to be quiet here and give you a good sense of what the tactile elements feel and sound like. I think it's actually very solid. The winding action is exceptionally smooth. We have nice action in the function pushers. I like the bi-directional bezel. I like the fact that it's an aluminum insert, that it's a 12-hour index. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with the tactile elements of the watch. Let's talk about some of the dial details. We'll go in on a macro level and take a look at the detail work, take a look at the printing. I think overall, this is very sharp. I don't see dust. I don't see particulates. There might be a minor blemish here or there, but overall, I like the dimensionality of the Tudor signature. I like the use of loom here, the use of orange. Uh, this is a fun piece. Now, obviously it's bold. It might not be to everyone's flavor. It might be a little bit out there, a little bit in left field, but Tudor, again, they're, they're that brand that manages to succeed in doing watches that are a little bit out there, a little bit in left field that don't make sense to everybody. I think they, they kind of excel in doing that. So I like the dial details. I, I want to draw your attention to the fact that the chronograph hand, it goes to the only the opaline portion of the dial. It doesn't go to that rather wide index ring that carries the orange markings. And so visually it feels a little bit short, but that's the intention that again, this is very similar, very similar, very faithful to that original 7169 from 1971. But it's not, a, it's not an exact one-to-one. -one. The dimensions are a little bit different. The running seconds and your elapsed minutes, they're actually flip-flopped from the original. And the date wheel feels a bit stark to me. It's bright white. It's, it's not quite the same shade as that opaline on the dial. In fact, I think this is a bit of a missed opportunity. And it sounds so silly nitpicking the color of the date wheel and how it's like seven shades off from the dial. But you know what? We're a rare breed as watch enthusiasts and we notice these types of details. I think Tudor should have color matched the date wheel to the dial. They've done so. Actually, they could have done so because if you look at the Tudor Black Bay Chronograph Steel and Gold, a watch that I just absolutely adore, I really want to add to my own collection, that date wheel has that eggshell or that off-white color that I think would work really well on this Heritage Chrono Blue. Now, other details, other differences outside of the Cyclops, outside of a couple little things, you guys will see the edges of the blue here on the trapezoidal elements of the bicompact layout. They're not harsh. They're a little bit rounded, a little bit different from that original Monte Carlo reference. But on the whole, you know, this watch is very faithful in spirit to that watch from the 1970s. And I like that. Again, having a more affordable, having a more obtainable, and having a modern version, a contemporary version of that watch is something that's celebrating your history and just adding something fun to the product catalog outside of countless Black Bays and outside of the very strong Tudor Pelago. So I do like this. Am I going to be buying one? Well, probably not. I think the chrono for me is that Black Bay Steel and Gold chrono. Man, that thing is cool. I can't emphasize enough how much that really spoke to me when I had it in hand. This one is certainly very fun, but you, I don't know. I can't buy them all. I can't own them all, but I can love them all. I can appreciate them all. And this is one of those models that I appreciate. Now, just in closing, let's talk about the negative elements and I'll give you my recommendation here. So the first negative element I think is the lack of anti-reflective treatment on the Sapphire Crystal. It's a hallmark of Tudor and Rolex. They very rarely do anti-reflective treatment. And I think they could do a great job if they put their mind to it. It would help with the clarity. It would help with the reflections. Uh, this just does not have it. And that's something you've got to be okay with if you buy a Rolex or if you buy a Tudor. Now, the last thing is more subjective and it depends on your wrist size. If you want this watch and you have a larger wrist, I think you need to buy it on the bracelet. I don't think you can, I don't think you can buy it on the fabric because the fabric there, it's not long. It really isn't. I have a couple extra holes here on a rather loose fit for a 7.25 inch wrist, 
But if you're 7.5, if you're up to eight inches with your wrist, which I know some of you that watch me have that wrist size, then this strap is just going to be too short. And I like this strap. I like the fact that this is different from a normal NATO. We have a spring bar holes sewn into the strap. So there is no tuck back that you have to go underneath the watch, adding height to your experience on wrist. This is very trim and slim. I like the hardware. I like the fact that you get a little bit of a hint of the top of the shield in the form of the buckle. That's interesting. So it's a nice strap, but it is rather short. And so if you have longer wrists or larger wrists, I don't think you're going to be able to get a good fit with this. So other than that, it's a solid piece. It's a cool piece. It's a loud piece. It's a proud piece. It's kind of a rock star. It's a really interesting one. And I want to thank Brent L. Miller for lending it in for presentation. They've been awesome in sending in Tudor watches. And I hope to get a Royal in very soon for review as soon as they get stock. So we can get a we can do a good in-depth review of that interesting new dressy piece. So guys, my contact is in the description. Brad, he's a viewer of the channel, longtime viewer, also works at Brentel Miller. He can hook you up. He can help you out if you're interested in Tudor. Thanks for watching today. Reach out with questions. I hope you have a great day. I'll see you real soon.